The burial site of two of history's biggest names has perplexed historians for centuries. Archaeologists have been chomping at the bit to unravel the tomb and reveal its contents. What secrets does it hold? What tales is it keen to regale? We might be very close to finding out. Why, you ask? Because the secret might just have been hiding right underneath our noses. Egypt did not have a single native ruler from the 4th century BCE and the 20th century. Let that sink in. That's because in the 4th century BCE, the Persians broke in and turned it into a satrapy. Alexander took Egypt from the Persians, and after his death, it fell to his general, Ptolemy. Thus began the Ptolemaic dynasty in Egypt, whose last ruler was Cleopatra VII Theophilopator, or simply Cleopatra. The Egyptians would later fall to the Romans, then with the Fatimids and the Ayyubids, to the Muslims. But getting back to our topic, why is Cleopatra such an important historical figure? Why is Hollywood obsessed with her? And why do people care so much about her race? To answer this question, we need some historical context. Cleopatra had a Greek lineage and was the monarch of Egypt. However, she was the first one of her dynasty to speak the language of the people she ruled. Here is a papyrus that attests to her leadership abilities. It calls her Philopatris, or she who loves her country. But despite her love for her home country, her legacy is unquestionably tied to the Roman Empire. Cleopatra rose to the throne after the death of her father, Ptolemy XII Audeles, in 51 BCE, but she shared it with her brother, Ptolemy XIII. The siblings' rivalry erupted into civil war, and Julius Caesar, the Roman general, arrived in Alexandria to serve as a mediator. One thing led to another, and Caesar defeated the army and allies of Ptolemy. He fell in love with Cleopatra and crowned her the emperor. They had a child together, Caesarion, who was not mentioned in Caesar's will when he died. Mark Antony, the vaunted general, was also ignored in favor of Octavian, who would later acquire the name Augustus. The disgruntled and disenchanted Roman general sent correspondence to Cleopatra over several military campaigns and was greeted with little enthusiasm in return. However, after meeting in person, the two developed a romantic relationship that remains the stuff of legends. She bore twins, and the couple had another boy later on. Antony's differences with Octavian eventually boiled over, and Caesar's successor sacked Alexandria. This is where the story gets interesting. Some sources claim that Cleopatra went into hiding and sent word to Antony about her suicide. Mark Antony ordered his slave, Eros, to kill him. But the slave couldn't bring himself to do it, and instead committed suicide himself. Antony, then, turned the sword on himself and eternalized his love story with the Ptolemaic queen. For quite a few years, archaeologists have prowled around Alexandria in search of the lover's resting place to no avail. Research and studies suggested that the answer might lay in this ancient city located to the west of Alexandria, Taposiris Magna, erected by Ptolemy II Philadelphus, son of the Ptolemaic dynasty's founder. The Greek historian Callisthenes reported that Alexander passed through this town during his expeditions. Callisthenes was later executed by Alexander, but that is a topic for another time. Excavations in the city began in the 20th century, and two monuments were restored, a tower and a temple. The city's name, Taposiris Magna, comes from the Greek historian Plutarch, and it means the Great Tomb of Osiris. He identifies it with the city's temple, dedicated to the Egyptian god of the dead. A radar survey of the city was completed by 2002. In 2010, they found the gate to the temple and a headless statue, which could quite possibly be Ptolemy IV the pharaoh who constructed the temple. Coins depicting Alexander the Great were also found at one point. A necropolis behind the temple contained Greco-Roman-style mummies facing the temple. Zahi Hawass, an Egyptologist and archaeologist who has also served as Egypt's minister for antique affairs, used this discovery to propose that the temple could be the resting place of a major figure. For instance, Cleopatra. Several scholars and historians tend to agree with the statement. According to some ancient accounts, Cleopatra's death was documented by her physician, Olympos. But Olympos is not a well-recorded historical subject, and we don't have a direct quote from him about Cleopatra's death. And so, the mystery of Cleopatra's death remains, well, a mystery. There are various reasons for not knowing much about the event, including the site of her burial. One of the major issues is the lack of proper historical documentation. The historical sources we do have often contradict each other. Since ancient historians were fond of playing hard and fast with facts, it is near impossible to know who's closest to the truth. 
The Egyptian folklore maintains that an asp, a poisonous local cobra, was brought to her. Strabo, the Greek historian, claims to have been in the city when it happened and narrates that Cleopatra had a toxic dose administered to her. Plutarch's version references Olympos but claims that he did not document the cause of death, which, if true, makes you think how bad he must have been at his job. He then presents a range of possibilities. 1. The emperor ordered that a reptile hidden beneath figs and leaves be brought to her so it could catch her unawares, but she saw it and extended her arm. 2. The reptile sprang from a water jar. 3. She poisoned herself with a poison comb she carried on her person at all times. He gives the most credence to the final version by adding that not even was the reptile seen within the chamber. Cassius Dio, the Roman historian, was also perplexed by Cleopatra's death, overwhelmed by the number of different tales. But Caesar, although vexed at the death of the woman, admired her lofty spirit, and he gave orders that her body should be buried with that of Antony in splendid and regal fashion. Some historians even theorize that the two somehow managed to be buried in a secret chamber to avoid the prying hands of the Romans. According to Cassius Dio, two of the couple's children were paraded in front of crowds in Rome before being taken in by Antony's fourth wife, Octavia. Oh yes, Antony was, for all intents and purposes, leading a double life. The couple's final child was married off to a North African king. However, Caesar considered Caesarian a threat and most likely had him killed. The trouble with finding the tomb of Cleopatra and Mark Antony extends beyond the muddy historical accounts. The city of Alexandria has undergone plenty of physical changes over the years. Wars and sackings aside, natural disasters like earthquakes and tsunamis have wreaked havoc on the city. In recent decades, urban development has made things worse, making the job of archaeologists even harder. A great example of this type of destruction is the Second Battle of El Alamein from the Second World War. It affected the ruins and archaeologists have found unexploded bombs as well as corpses of Italian and Kiwi soldiers. Work on the site stopped for a while, but continued after a while, and more artifacts and structures from the Ptolemaic era were dug up. The progress signaled that success might be around the corner, but they did not have any definitive ideas about Cleopatra's tomb. But, gradually, that too started to change. Archaeologist Kathleen Martinez has been working on uncovering the mystery since 2002. She discovered 27 tombs, seven of which have staircases leading to elaborate burial chambers. The result? Ten mummies, two of them gilded. Martinez has also discovered a temple chamber dedicated to the goddess Isis, the sister wife of Osiris, and the mother of Horus. This is important because Cleopatra followed the tradition of Egyptian monarchs to identify with deities by associating herself with Isis. This helped her legitimize her rule and earn a favorable turn with the masses. The temple contains various deep shafts, three of which were used to bury important people. Not only that, Martinez also discovered a statue of Cleopatra's face and coins bearing her resemblance. The statues show no sign of sub-Saharan ancestry, which has been a topic of debate in recent years. The coins portray her as a fairly attractive woman, which corresponds to the tales of her first meetings with both Caesar and Antony. However, recently, some scholars have posited that she probably was not attractive due to the internal breeding of the royal line. The coins could have produced a more flattering appearance, so who knows? Another interesting find is a mask with a cleft chin, a feature often attributed to Mark Antony. In January 2021, the archaeologist found more ancient tombs, one of which had a mummy with a gold leaf amulet in the form of a tongue, presumably to converse with Osiris in the afterlife. All of these were well and good, but Martinez's latest discovery blew everyone's socks off. In November 2002, Martinez discovered a tunnel almost 43 feet underground, 6.5 foot tall and 4,300 foot long. The tunnel is a geometric miracle, an exact replica of Eupalinos Tunnel in Samos, Greece, which is considered as one of the most important engineering achievements of antiquity, she explained. Zahi Hawass, like many others, is convinced that both Cleopatra and Mark Antony were buried in the same tomb. Parts of the tunnel are submerged in water and might take some time to get to traverse it. Several scholars and archaeologists are convinced that the tunnel leads to the elusive tomb and that the discovery of the lover's burial site is all but inevitable. Kathleen Martinez, who has been working in Egypt for the last 20 years, believes that this is the perfect place for the tomb of Cleopatra. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. Do you think we're on the brink of a historical discovery? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. For more interesting content, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell. 
That's it for now and see you in the next one.